Judgment. Loving others. Two totally different things, aren't they? One, the first, judgment, it pushes people away. The other, loving others, well, it pulls people in, doesn't it? It's hard. We, well, we tend to do both, don't we? It's within our human nature. We can't help but judge others, and at the same time, we also can't help but love others. But Jesus actually tells us whose job it is ultimately to judge, and also what job ours is with this story. But first, I want to share a story with you before I talk about this passage about Babe Ruth. One time, Babe Ruth, who's a very famous baseball player, even if you aren't a fan of baseball, you've probably heard Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth was a very good hitter, one of the all-time greatest hitters. Very rarely struck out. But in this case, Babe Ruth struck out. Not only did he strike out, but he struck out looking, meaning he didn't even take the bat off his shoulders to try to swing. He just watched strike three. Well, the whole stadium started booing. And Babe Ruth decided that he would turn to the umpire and he would say, well, sir, there's 40,000 people that disagree with you. There's 40,000 people that think that that was a ball. Well, the whole crowd just waited in silence. The whole crowd just anticipated for Babe Ruth to get ejected. But the umpire, he had a cool head, and cooler heads prevailed. The umpire just looked at Babe Ruth, and the umpire, ironically, his name was also Babe, said to Babe Ruth, well, Babe, there's 40,000 people here. There's only one opinion that counts. That's mine. Friends, there are a lot of opinions in the world, aren't there? Everybody has one. And everybody thinks that they're right. And that's the problem. But ultimately, there's only one opinion that matters. It's God's. And so what Jesus is saying in our parable here today is exactly that. There can be lots of opinions. Ultimately, there's one that matters, and it's God's. But in the meantime, friends, we have a job to do. Our job is simply to, well, love others. So that's what we're going to look at today. So in our parable, it's a very simple story. Farmer plants some seeds overnight. Enemy comes in, plants some weeds. Weeds and the seeds, they both grow, and... The workers go, uh-oh, we got a problem. What do we do? The farmer says, no, nope, don't pull anything up. We're going to wait till the end. And everything will be sorted out at the end. Wise words from Jesus. Everything will be sorted out at the end. Ultimately, the farmer will make the judgment. Well, that's the idea with life as well. So I want to talk about each of these different parts because there's different aspects in this story. There's different individuals in this story. So the first thing that we need to understand that Jesus is talking about with the story is that, well, the dirt. Yes, dirt is important in this story. Dirt is the world. And that was the analogy that Jesus is using. Dirt is the world. The seeds are cast into the world. And so the second part is the seeds. The Christians, we are the seeds that we are called to go out into the world. But it's important about the third part, the farmer. See, the seeds come from the farmer. The seeds they come from the farmer. The seeds, they're called to bear fruit. They're called to bear fruit from the farmer. The farmer is Christ. See, the farmer is the source. The farmer is the source of everything. Farmer is the source of everything in this story. So we are called as Christians, well, to be individuals that, well, bear fruit. Individuals that, well, are different in the world. Individuals that people begin to notice that something's different. 
different than how, well, the rest of the world responds. Because there's weeds. And that's the last part in the story. Weeds are everywhere. Weeds are challenges, difficulties, problems. Jesus even explains later on that, well, sometimes even people. There's lots of weeds in life. But we're called in the midst of this, well, to be different. See, it's nice that we have this plant right behind me here because the seeds and weeds actually both kind of looked very similar to that, the wheat and the weeds. And it was very hard to tell the difference between the two. You had to wait till the end. That's what Jesus said. We're going to wait till the end. Judgment is a very, very hard thing. We all have different opinions, like I used in the beginning with the Babe Ruth story. 40,000 opinions. Everybody has them. Everybody thinks that they're right. Friends, we live in a world filled with weeds where there's challenges, there's difficulties, there's problems that arise. We're not called to be a people full of judgment. What we're called to be is a people that bear fruit. We're called to be seeds planted in the dirt of the earth. We're called to be people that radiate God's love. That's what we're called to do. Judgment is such a difficult and challenging job. Well, it's a God-sized job. It's not our job. There was an individual, and his name was F.B. Meyer. He said one of the reasons why we should not be an individuals that judge is two primary things. Really, the first is, is that when we see an individual doing something wrong, we don't know how hard they're actually working on undoing that problematic thing. He's right. They may already be working really, really hard and making a lot of progress. The second is we don't know how we would respond in that situation. Both those things that Mr. Meyer says are absolutely right. We don't know how hard someone's working, and we don't know how we would respond. Friends, we need to be a people that radiate love, not judgment. So get ready to close. I'm going to close with a story about a wife and a husband who were having some marital challenges, let's say. They were having these challenges, and the wife was fed up. She went to go see a counselor, and she said, I hate my husband. Yeah, she said, I hate my husband. In fact, she had already passed so much judgment that she said, I want to get revenge. He's hurt me so much, I want to get revenge on him. I want him to feel exactly what I felt. So the counselor, in his infinite wisdom, said, this is what I want you to do. Before you file for a divorce, I want you to really get back at him. I want you to love on him so much. I want you to love on him so much that he begins to have zero doubt that you actually love him. I want you to do a bunch of stuff for him. I want you to tell, you, tell him that you love him. I want you to just pour love on him. Because then, when you get ready to drop the bomb on him, that you want a divorce, it will just, it'll crush him. While the wife, sitting at the end of this counseling session, oh, she was thrilled. She got a big smile from ear to ear, and she was ready to do this plan. In fact, she said, beautiful, beautiful. She was ready to do this. A couple weeks passed. Counselor never heard anything. So we decided to give her a call. He said, are you ready to file that divorce? She simply chuckled and said, no. Why would I want to file divorce? I've fallen back in love with my husband. His friends, action led back to emotion. She had spent so much time passing judgment, she forgot the love aspect. 
oftentimes in life, because we live in a world filled with weeds, challenges, problems, difficulties, and problematic people, we forget the love aspect as well. Jesus is very clear in this parable that God ultimately will take care of the judging. It's probably best. So we're going to get ready to celebrate communion. Ultimately, God is a God that also remembers one big thing that we forget as humanity. Grace. That's what we celebrate at this table. Friends, in a world filled with weeds, and the world is the dirt, what kind of seeds are you sowing? What kind of tree are you becoming? What kind of fruit are you producing? Bitterness? Anger? Frustration? Or is it fruit that people want to eat? Patience? Kindness? Love? Fruit that will make a difference in the world. The difference this world so desperately needs. Friends, let's seek wisdom this week from Jesus. In a world filled with weeds, let's let God do the judging. And let's simply just be people that will bear fruit, bear light, bear love. Amen.